The Dream Machines DM5 Blink is one of the latest releases from the Polish manufacturer. The DM5 Blink is priced at around 40 US dollars or euros. Now, one thing about this mouse is immediately obvious. The DM5 Blink has a design that is very close to the Razer Basilisk. However, it is not a copy of the Basilisk as there are plenty of differences in both the shape and the functionality of the mice. In addition, the DM5 Blink uses the Pixar PMW3389 optical sensor. One thing to keep in mind is that the mouse featured in this review is an updated variant of the DM5 Blink. And what changes were made with this update? Well, apparently the build quality is much better and they removed the accessories completely. The DM5 Blink is a right-handed mouse, which means that the top side of the casing is sloped towards the right side. The shape is carried around on both the upper side of the mouse and especially on the front side with both main clicks, one being placed higher than the other one. The sides of the mouse are distinctive and by that I mean that unless you look at them close, you'd think that they are the same as the Razer Basilisk. In addition, both sides of the mouse, while they don't look that they're made from rubber, in fact they are. And it is a rather soft rubber texture that will definitely provide a good grip while using the mouse. The left side of the mouse features the highlight of the DM5 Blink, which is the sniper button located towards the front of the mouse. What this button does is pretty simple, you press it and the DPI of the mouse will be temporarily lowered to allow for more precision while aiming in video games, hence the name sniper button. This is not exactly something new and unheard of, but it does work as advertised and it can be useful in certain scenarios. Unfortunately, this side does not really offer a good spot to place your thumb, which results in your thumb not having a constant position and many times sliding downwards. Above the left side of the mouse, there are two wide buttons, which are the forward and backwards buttons on the mouse. These have a matte texture, which is pretty close with the coating used on the rest of the mouse. These two buttons have a good tactile feedback and are quite good, while I was expecting them to be mushy. They are quite stiff and have little trouble into them, thanks to the Huano made switches. The other side of the mouse is simple, with no buttons. Thus, it is just a place where your fingers sit. Opposite to the left side, the right side is quite flat and has the same soft rubber coating as the other sides of the mouse. It is a good thing to note here that the sides of the mouse have a softer rubber coating than the upper side of the mouse, which is good. Why? Because the top of the mouse is always prone to stains and fingerprints, while the sides are less likely to gather particles of dust or other things. The scroll wheel is made out of two sections, as it is the case with most mice these days. The main part of the mouse has a matte white finish to allow for the light and color of the LEDs on the underside of the mouse to shine through. The top side of the scroll wheel is covered by a rubber coating that also has an arrow-chevron type pattern applied to it. This is done to create more grip when using the scroll wheel and also to create a tactile feedback for each click of the scroll wheel switch. Above the scroll wheel there are two small buttons. These when pressed will cycle through the predefined DPI profiles of the mouse. The profiles are 400 DPI, 800, 1600, 2400, 4800 and finally 16000 DPI. But these can be customized using the software of the mouse. The back side of the mouse is pretty simple, as here there's nothing other than the Dream Machines logo. Also, this logo is RGB illuminated at the same time as the rest of the mouse. And speaking of which, one difference between the DM5 Blink and the Razer is that the Blink has plenty of RGB, and I mean plenty of it, on both sides, on the rear logo and on the scroll wheel. The underside of the DM5 Blink uses a total of 3 Teflon made feet two at the back and a single wide one at the front. In addition, at the center of the mouse, there are two physical switches. One will toggle between on or off for the RGB illumination of the mouse, while the other one will change the pulling rate of the sensor. The cable of the mouse has a total length of roughly 1.8 meters or around 5.9 feet in freedom units. The cable is covered by a soft shoelace sleeving and uses a gold-plated USB connector for increased reliability. The cable itself is very flexible and should have very little drag across most surfaces. 
Taking the mouse apart is very simple. You just remove some screws that are found behind the Teflon fit on the underside of the mouse. And with the upper case removed, we get to see how the DM5 blink is put together. We start with the main clicks of the mouse and these are using Huano blue case with a wide stem switches. These switches have been widely used in plenty of other mice, including Dream Machines models as well. The switches offer a good tactile feedback and a satisfying clicking sound when pressed and have a life expectancy of over 20 million clicks. The scroll wheel switch used is also made by Huano, however, this model is using a black casing with a green stem. This switch requires more actuation force to be operated, but it still offers a good tactile feedback. Plus, a stiffer switch means that you will not press it by mistake. At the center of the PCB, there is the Pixart PMW4389 optical sensor which equips the DM5 blink. Behind the sensor, there is the MCU of the mouse, and it is made by who knows, as these things are often custom labeled for the manufacturer. Another thing to see here is that the cable of the mouse is using a socket and a connector on the PCB. This means that at any time the cable of the mouse can be replaced, if it gets damaged or if you want something else shorter or longer. Not having the cable soldered directly onto the PCB is probably a thing which most people don't really care for, but it is a great thing to have especially if you want to keep the mouse for longer. The RGB LEDs used on this mouse are placed on the inner edges of the PCB and are quite strong in terms of the lightning. Fortunately, the white made plastic inner shell will evenly spread the light and color around the mouse. As is the case with all mice reviews on this channel, before we head into the testing of the mouse and its software, we have a noise sample of the buttons of the mouse. This way you can get to hear the quality of each switch, but also the quality of the mouse itself, which includes the casing and how it feels on a mouse pad. The software used with the DM5 Blink is pretty nice in terms of the interface and user experience. This piece of software offers plenty of customization options for the mouse including a dedicated macro editor for all the buttons, complete control over the RGB LEDs and changing the functions of the buttons at a glance. We start our testing with the basic Microsoft Paint test, which is performed using 5 different DPI settings, in this case 400, 800, 2400, 3200 and 16000. This test is used to showcase the performance of the sensor running with different DPI settings. And in this test, the performance of the sensor is quite good, with no deviation present not even at 16,000 DPI, although working at that value is quite the challenge. Please keep in mind that the jagged edges that you might see in the Microsoft Paint test can be blamed on the metal made mouse pad that I'm using, as so far, changing to different pads yielded different results, many times inconsistent. For gaming and other related things, this mouse is pretty good. The shape is okay for the most part, although I could do with a bit more support for my thumb on the left side of the mouse. The switches are solid and offer a good tactile feedback. The tracking is on point on different surfaces and I can say that the DM5 Blink did not miss a bit regardless of the game that I was playing. The Dream Machines DM5 Blink is a good mouse for the price. However, in some parts of the world, it is very close to the Razer Basilisk Essential. I'd say that on average, the price difference between the two models is roughly 10 US dollars. However, the DM5 Blink offers much more than the Razer Basilisk Essential, such as RGB, if you care for that, a better software that does not require an internet connection to work, and also a software which has a small footprint on your system when it's running. The DM5 Blink also can be used with no software installed at all, and you'll still be able to turn off the RGB LEDs and change the DPI settings. Anyway, the performance of the mouse is very good and this new updated variant of the mouse brings out a great build quality, with a solid feel on the mouse casing and on the mechanical switches. The shape of the mouse is known by most and it is good, however I wish the left side of the mouse would offer more support for the thumb. If you like this review, then you can perhaps consider subscribing for more and also if you want to support the channel in a direct way, then in the description below you can find both the Patreon and the Subscriber Star pages of the channel.